Hi everyone. Hi everyone. Um, thanks for tuning in. My name is Rosario Huiraldes and I am the assistant curator at the Drawing Center and co-curator of the exhibition Guo Fengyi to see from a distance that opened on February 19th at the museum. Um, and unfortunately, as you all know, um, it's temporarily closed. The good news is that um, if you didn't um, see the show yet um, and you're going to be in New York or you live in New York, you might have the chance to see it because we're planning um, to extend the show until the fall. And if not, um, or regardless, um, we just launched today um, an initiative in partnership with Bloomberg uh, in the form of an app you can download for free from, from your iTunes store or your store uh, from your cell phones, um, the app for free. It's called Bloomberg Connect. Um, and so you will be able to access um, our museum virtually. We've created a lot of um, content for you to engage and experience um, our shows um, from your homes. Um, as we continue to shelter um, in place. In addition, you can also access for free um, our catalogs. Um, so everything is online for you to read the essays um, of every of our shows, including uh, Guo Fengi's show. Um, so um, I first wanted to thank our funders, uh, the Long March Space in Beijing, the WLS Spencer Foundation, uh, the Toll Charitable Foundation and Sarah Peter. Uh, and I also wanted to let you know that the exhibition will be traveling in the fall um, to our partnering institution for this project, the SCAD Museum of Art, where it will be, it will be organized by Umberto Moro. Um, thanks also to our friends from the Asia Art Archive. Uh, it's a nonprofit organization with branches in New York and Hong Kong that since the 2000s have been documenting and making accessible the histories of art of the region. Um, and finally, I would like to thank all my colleagues um, from the Drawing Center, um, and especially Alison Underwood, Karen Andin, Amy Good, um, and this Isabella Kapoor and Nadia Parfait, who, who are on the back end, um, making sure that you can all see um, this program right now. Um, so about the lecture, uh, I'm going to be talking for about 40 minutes. Um, and if you have any questions while, while I'll speak, you can um, write them down on the, on, the, on the comment section of YouTube. And my colleagues will pass on some of the questions for me to answer uh, once I'm done. So I won't be answering any questions until my presentation uh, is over. Uh, so without further ado, um, I'm going to, yeah, start. Um, uh, so we're probably now watching Guo Fengyi drawing. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit of who she was. Uh, Guo Fengyi was born in 1942 in Kaifeng, Henan, and lived her entire life in Xi'an, um, where she died in, in 2010. Uh, Xi'an is China's ancient seat of dynastic power and cultural capital, and today, uh, capital of the Shaanxi province. Guo, who never received a formal artistic education, held various positions in factories as a chemical analyst uh, until the late 1980s, when she uh, was forced to retire because of severe uh, rheumatoid arthritis that was exacerbated by the nature of her work. Um, so as a way to ease her pain, uh, she started to practice Qigong, uh, which is a traditional Chinese healing and wellness technique that invo involves coordinated movements, breathing, um, and meditation to cultivate and balance uh, one's, one's force uh, or energy. Um, so, and, so because Guo uh, began to draw as a result of, of, of of, of her journaling, because um, wh when she started to, to practice Qigong, she, she kept a journal where she wrote down her experience. Um, and subsequently, she would begin every new work by first writing the name of what she wanted to draw on the center of the page, 
uh, written language is really her, her starting point, her origin point. Um, I will now uh, share my screen with you. Uh, bear with me for a moment. Okay, um, so the image that you're looking at um, is from one of her early uh, journals uh, where she began to write her experiences while practicing Qigong. So she would write down how her body felt, uh, what she visualized, and how she could calibrate her visions while adjusting her body positions. Um, and if you look on the, on the upper uh, left corner um, of the journal in this, in this next slide, you will notice that there's a small drawing of a human-like figure. So this is where she, she starts to, to draw um, her body and how her body felt. Um, and very quickly, um, she began to use her journals um, as a way to, to make drawings. So she stopped um, writing, and so she moved from, from writing her experiences to really uh, drawing them. So this quick transition from words to images is really key to her work. Um, and over the next 20 years, because you have to um, know that her, her artistic career was, 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 was very um, prolific, uh, 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 intense, she produced over 500 drawings, but in only 20 years. Um, so Wu, who was a wife, a mother, a grandmother, really devoted herself to this practice which she credited with unleashing an artistic energy that produced a large and astonishing body of drawings. Wu in fact developed a, a very personal genre of Qigong that she called the Qie Gong, uh, the Gong of the Penguin, uh, and, and, and which, which reached, reached its peak in the late 1990s when she was actually recognized by thousands of apprentices all over the country and followers as someone who possessed special powers to divine fortunes and to diagnose illnesses. Um, this next image uh, here, it's, it's one of her very first uh, drawings. Um, it is dated June 4th, 1989, only a couple of weeks after um, she said she had begin, began to make drawings of the visions that she had. Um, and in this drawing, we see a Buddha um, that is meditating on a, on a lotus throne. And this Buddha is understood to exist among a collection of treasures that are kept in the underground palace uh, of the giant Golgus Pagoda that was built in 625 in southern Xi'an to store sutra scrolls and other treasures brought from ancient India by a Chinese Buddhist monk. But to me, the most surprising aspect of this drawing is that it is dated June 4th, 1989. And as many of you will remember, um, this is the date of one of the most significant uprisings in modern China, uh, when China, of Chinese, modern Chinese history took place as pro-democratic protesters, including students from Beijing art schools, seized Tiananmen Square calling for greater accountability, constitutional due process, and freedom of expression. So what followed in China was a period of profound transformation um, and a profound um, social and economic shifts, a seismic transformation that impacted every aspect of Chinese society, including the field of art. And, and this is a key moment in how um, contemporary Chinese art has been historicized, and this and and and, and that is understood uh, as, as 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 a new chapter that began in in, in Chinese history after 1989, and this was a chapter where artists were imbued with a sense of artistic autonomy, experimentation, and gradual international recognition. Um, so artists increasingly tried to free artistic creation from collective activities. Uh, motivated by social political goals and instead relocated the meaning of art in the creative process and experience. And, and for me, it's really significant that while all of this was happening, Google was at her home in her kitchen um, making this drawing, trying to divine 
um, the concept, the contents under in, in the underground of this um, pagoda. Um, this is a quote by her. Um, it reads, I began drawing on May 21, 1989. Before that, I was frequently ill and my health wasn't optimal. I hear that even those who cannot write can prescribe medicine, which to me sounds quite magical. So I decided to try drawing. That's how I began. Um, so as I just said, this is a quote from, from an interview that contemporary Chinese artist Chu Tan um, who actually contributed an essay to the catalog. And Xu Ten uh, conducted an interview in 2007 uh, as part of a commission for a group exhibition of contemporary Chinese artists in Kunsthaus Grass in Austria, uh, to, to which both himself and Guo were invited to participate, among other well-known contemporary Chinese artists, uh, including Ai Weiwei, Kao Fei, and Xu Sen. Uh, so the second thing that I wanted to say, uh, that we can say about her drawing practice, is that just like her Qigong practice, it was not an artistic pursuit uh, in and of itself or, or, or at the beginning, but rather a result of her wish to heal herself and to cultivate her spirit. Um, and here for me, um, this is a drawing made um, by, by, by the five, um, the group of, 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 of women artists that with, with whom Hilma F. Clint uh, channeled um, and, and made drawings. And for me, the role um, of the exercise of, in automatism that is understood uh, to have played in, in Hilma's work, um, whose abstractions now we know uh, predate the ones of Kandinsky, uh, was very useful and of course put major differences aside so because they were working almost 90 years apart. Uh, one was working in the West and the other one in China. Automatism is understood to have enabled Af Clint, and here I'm quoting uh, Tracy Boschkov, who, who was the curator of her survey uh, at the Guggenheim, uh, the unlearning uh, to bravely step outside the confines of her academic art training and into a world of an original imagery of abstract forms she devised. And that is the end of the quote. By the same logic, uh, I argue that for Guo, who had not had any artistic uh, academic art training, Qigong might have provided her with a very specific opportunity to develop a deeply personal and symbolically charged uh, visual language. Um, so moving back onto an, an, another um, early drawing of Guo, there are two um, there are two uh, interesting things about this drawing. The first one is that it serves as evidence of the wide range of information that began um, to be available through the news media and through television during China's opening to the West. Um, so because. Because in, in, at this moment, China was uh, undergoing this robust process of modernization and, and catching up with the West. And all of these images and news uh, circulating in, in the news media in the West began to circulate in China as well. And this was something that visually and intellectually stimulated Guo. This, the title of this drawing, as you read in the caption, is the Bermuda Triangle. And, and as you may remember, it is a loosely defined region in the western part of the North Atlantic Ocean, where a number of airplanes and ships were said to have disappeared without a trace. Uh, and it drew significant attention in the international news media uh, and also in China in the 1980s. And Guo took notice of this and, and she wanted to resolve this mystery through drawing. Um, so this composition, uh, it, it's, it, it, it's divided into two parts. And on the left side, there's a kind of like vertical a conic structure uh, filled with a pattern of triangular um, shapes um, made of curved lines. Um, and at the bottom of it, there's a sphere uh, inside of which there are small circles made with drawn spirals. And the sphere is connected uh, to the upper top to what to me looks like, um, like a semicircle filled with uh, like a water-like, ripple-like texture connected to the bottom, to the sphere. Uh, so to me, this drawing looks as if a ball of energy is pulling from the surface uh, downwards. Um, and so the fact that she was make, made this drawing of, of a site um, that she didn't physically know bring us to another aspect of her practice, which is 
its visionary character. And this is something that um, Laura gets a little bit in the in the, in the introduction that, that, that she wrote for the essay. Laura Hotman, um, my co-curator and the, um, the Drawing Center's executive director. Um, so this quote says, um, before I draw, I do not know, I do not know what I, what it will become. It is only after I finish the drawing that I know. Looking at the work afterwards, I am able to see several other things. I draw because I do not know. I draw to know. Um, so as I just said, this is another quote uh, by her where she makes clear the inductive character of her work which is not too far away from the understanding of art making as a form of research and knowledge production that has become so um, popular in recent years. But because Kuo never attended art school um, and because the subjects of her drawings um, were the result of visions rather than, than direct observation, in the contemporary uh, art world, her work has been characterized as outsider art. Uh, which is a contested term, but also a large subgenre of the art world that deals um, with those who do not go to art school, who are mentally ill, um, who made art, art without um, situating it in a kind of um, art historical uh, trajectory. And so when presented in a contemporary art context in the West, Guo's work has been framed um, up until our show um, as outsider art, and I will get um, a, a little bit more in detail into this um, in a few minutes. Um, many of Guo's drawings, um, which she felt compelled to draw, uh, included people or places that she hadn't physically seen before, it, which, which she hadn't, has, hadn't physically seen before. Um, so the less she knew about something, she told Xu Tan, the better she could paint it. Uh, and during a very early research, of uh, a very early stage of my research, I found um, this quote by her where she said that her drawing practice was her way of seeing from a distance, uh, which is a sentence um, that caught my attention. It, it became the, the title of the show. And over the last couple of weeks, I've been um, returning to the, to the meaning of, of, of what she um, meant um, by saying that, that her art making was a way of seeing from a distance. Um, I guess in light of, of how we are ourselves experiencing our lives right now um, um, and seeing from a distance our families, our co-workers, um, and even art. Um, but um, and she was a woman making art um, in China uh, in the 1980s. And so she understood this already then. So I think that there's something uh, very interesting to think about uh, in that sense and in, in light of, 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 of the pandemic. Um, so now I'm going to explain a little bit um, how she drew um, and we're going to talk about uh, some of the recurring visual motifs and then I'm going to uh, try to wrap up. Um, Google's early drawings um, were made uh, on her grandchildren's school books and on the back of old calendars as in the case of numeric code that you're looking at right now. Um, and she would begin every drawing by first writing the name of what she wanted to draw on the center of the page and would then subsequently uh, would then draw line by line until she felt uh, that the drawing's energy was right. Uh, in order to draw this vision, which, which, which was all often something that she had seen uh, while meditating, um, she would sometimes work from one edge to the paper to the opposite and would sometimes um, start at the center and then complete one side and then flip the, 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 the paper and, and draw the other side, resulting in, 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 in symmetrical drawings. But she never worked a kind of like with a plan in mind. Uh, she never had kind of like a full picture of the drawing before finishing it, mostly because she was working, uh, as you saw in this previ previous image, in a very small table. So she would continue to like roll down the paper. Um, and, and she was, of course, working with traditional materials, um, with rice paper, um, with, with, with ink. Um, but she was really like subverting their use. She was using um, the, the rice paper uh, vertically, which is like not typical at all. Um, so now we're going to move into um, some of her recurring visual motifs. Um, there are three main that we can identify. 
uh, which are the use of faces, the use of numbers, and the use of circles. I will speak very generally about, about them. Um, but if you're interested to have a more thorough understanding um, about the relationship between her work and, and what Professor Ryer describes as a close connection between the mo notion of embodying the cosmos um, and the creative act um, that is widely discussed in traditional um, uh, Chinese art criticism, I, I highly recommend you to read Professor Ryer's essay uh, because she has provided a very close um, interpretation of some of Google's drawings uh, substantiated um, by her deep knowledge of Chin Chinese traditional medicine, uh, Chinese cultural traditions, the I Ching, and Chinese uh, uh, spiritual practices, including Qigong. Um, so as I said before, um, Guo's artistic career has been understood um, as part of her quest to heal herself and to cultivate her spirit. Um, she began to, to, to practice Qigong to alleviate her pain, uh, which resulted in visions that she started to, to draw, that she felt compelled to draw. And many of these visions included uh, sites or people that she hadn't physically seen before, uh, such as dynastic grave sites, gods, um, and even in some cases, international figures. Like she once drew um, the Statue of Liberty, um, to which I have like, many thoughts. I'm not sure that I will get there this time, but maybe some other time. Um, but drawing subjects and places that will likely never be seen, such as a dynastic gravesite or a funeral chamber or a god, uh, maybe gave Guo the freedom to draw them however she wanted because uh, she didn't have to regard, uh, uh, without regard for, uh, for achieving exact likeness. Um, so here you can see some of the drawings um, that include um, faces and, and, and how um, kind of like her line work became much more uh, sophisticated as, as, as years um, went by. Uh, this is like a very late drawing from 2006. Uh, Laura and I love this drawing. Um, the second um, motif uh, are the numbers. Um, and from precise date and time uh, inscriptions, um, where you can see in this drawing that, that, that it was um, started at 340. I cannot see the ending time because uh, I have another screen. Um, but from exact date and time inscriptions to numerical annotations within renderings of characters, gods, and body organs, uh, numbers are ubiquitous in her work. Um, and by looking at Google's drawings and the use of numbers, we can identify certain alignments to Chinese cosmological theory, including concepts derived from the Book of Changes and traditional Chinese medicine, as well as correlations between the systems with the universe and human life. Um, and here I also want to quote Professor Ryer. She, in her essay notes, um, that Guo uh, was an advanced Qigong practitioner who delved into a deep and thorough study of various Taoist texts and practices that aim at abolishing the boundaries between the physical world and the Gospels. Uh, Professor Ryer also notes, however, that despite the various correlations between Guo's intricate drawings and ancient Chinese cosmological diagrams and concepts, um, the meaning of these numbers remains um, somewhat unclear and and to this this i would add that trying to prove a kind of like precise meaning or truth value of the use of numbers also leads to a kind of a like to a dead end um, i don't think that that's like necessarily the point um so here you can see another uh, later drawing including uh numbers and arrows um so now I got into my third um, recurring motif, um, which is the use of circles, um, whether forming textures similar to human muscles, uh, womb-like cocoon shapes, or circles filled with Chinese characters or numbers, the shape of the circle is commonly present in Guo's intricate drawings. Uh, although there isn't a great deal of scholarship concerning the use of this distinct shape in Guo's work, circles have profound symbolic meaning uh, in Chinese symbolism. In Chinese culture, 
Uh, the circle represents concepts such as fulfillment, oneness, uh, unity, and perfection. Uh, and again, as Professor Breyer describes um, in her essay, um, in yin-yang theory, which is one of the most important uh, relational concepts in Chinese culture that is referenced in numerous works, a perfect circle divided by a sinuous line represents the oneness of complementary forces that interact to form dynamic systems in which the whole is greater than the assembled parts. But the process of something coming full circle, um, whether a drawing, a spiritual practice, or a concept, is what I think bears more um, important. No, what I what what is known to bear more importance uh, in Chinese culture. And so I would say that perhaps it is this notion which inspired uh, Guo's frequent use of the circle in her spiritualistic uh, drawings. Um, so Guo continued making drawings in relative isolation um, until 2002, when Beijing-based curator uh, Lu Zhe, who's the uh, director and founder of the Long March Space Gallery uh, in Beijing um, that represents her estate. So Lu Zhe, um, when he was uh, doing his graduate thesis at Goldsmiths, um, he embarked on a very ambitious project um, of exhibitions along the historical route of Mao Zedong, uh, Mao Zedong's Long March. And during a research trip uh, in Xi'an, he first saw, encountered uh, Guo's work in an exhibition at the Xi'an uh, Academy of Fine Arts. Uh, and, and so immediately struck by the quality and the distinctiveness of Guo's work, um, he invited Guo to join uh, his Long March project uh, where, where he actually introduced Guo to American feminist artist uh, Beauty Chicago. Um, so Guo joined um, the Long March project at its fifth site in Lijiang, Yunnan province, um, in southwest China, where she made the drawing that you're looking at now that's titled uh, Lugu Lake uh, in, on June 5th. Um, and here we and, and here we can all I, I, I also need to uh, say something else about her practice which is um, how much it grew in scale in only 10 years uh, who uh, trip duplicated if not triplicated the size of her drawings which began um, from, from from being made in small uh, journals uh, to drawings up to 13 feet long 4.5 meters um, um, so made with expensive um, but but precise lines in, in a long rice paper scroll, uh, this drawing features a goddess-like figure with a fish tail, um, with a very distinct um, hairdo and, and and like a figure on top of of, of, of the hairdo, um, and the drawing was later included in the Long March Project's um, sixth site at Lugu Lake, uh, hence the uh, drawing's title. But Guo herself wasn't present at the show as she felt Li Jiang, as she left Li Jiang after perceiving a disharmonized energy field um, while practicing Qigong. Um, the definitive and, uh, and, and, and Lu Zhe was really the person that introduced um, Guo's work to, uh, to, inter to an international contemporary art context. Um, and so the definite internationalization of her work began in 2010 um, when the work was included in 10,000 Lives, the 8th of Gwangju Biennale in South Korea, uh, immediately following a period in the international contemporary art discourse during which, um, and again, this is a quote um, by Philip uh, Tenari from the show uh, Art in China um, after 1989, a theater in the world, um, also at the Guggenheim. And, and Tinari describes this moment uh, when contemporary Chinese art was on its way to official acceptance, both inside China and abroad, uh, in a trajectory of legitimization that began with the Ch Shanghai Biennale in 2000 and culminated in the first presentation of an official uh, Chinese pavilion at the Venice Biennale in 2005. Uh, subsequently, in 2012, Guo's work was included. Um, she had her first um, solo uh, survey in, 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 in Canada uh, in, a, in Contemporary Art Gallery. Um, and then in 2013, her work was included at, at, a Car at the Carnegie International in 
Pittsburgh. Um, at the, the group exhibition, The Alternative Guide to the Universe um, at Hayward Gallery in London. And finally, in the most um, legitimizing uh, international group exhibitions of all, uh, the, 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 the 55th Venice Biennale. Um, but even in these instances of renowned global contemporary art exhibitions, Gould's artwork was firmly um, contextualized as outsider art. As a result, um, significant opportunities to frame her as a contemporary Chinese artist were missed and her absence from international contemporary art discourse um, further reinforced. Um, for in instance, the Hayward Gallery um, e exhibition surveyed the work of artists identified as, quote, mavericks, visionaries, and outsiders uh, who produced their work outside of established institutions and disciplines. And that is the end of the quote. Um, that Google's work is not precisely contemporary art is emphasized in the exhibition's catalog, um, which describes Google as an artist who's uh, and this is another quote, use of diagram-like renderings conjures the background of ongoing research and theory, as well as a practical application of new ideas, with the same aesthetic intrigue and playfulness that characterizes all compelling visual art. Uh, that's the end of the quote. So for the curators, Google's work shared the aesthetic qualities with all compelling visual art, but it was clearly something else. Uh, these instances of international recognition um, notwithstanding, Guo's place uh, in contemporary Chinese art remains unclear, uh, with a surprising lack of attention paid to her work in China, um, where she has been dismissed by some who believe that her interest um, and background in traditional spiritual healing practices uh, was somehow at odds with her legitimacy as an artist. Um, other narratives that were written by Chinese critics, even positive ones, um, share a skepticism of her artwork's relevance for contemporary Chinese art. Um, the critic Chang Song Sung advocated for Guo, but with the perhaps um, not too generous perspective um, that her contribution to the modern world was not located within the progressive character of her images, but in a nostalgia for lost values in traditions. Um, to the date, the project to introduce her work into the contemporary Chinese art discourse has not identified uh, the, the what I what I say um, I refer to like their her drawings resistance to a single interpretation, uh, which in other words means as contemporary art. Instead, it indicates the merit of Gould's drawings in as much as they are able to preserve um, an erotic character and history. Um, in another text, uh, Peng De, a professor at Xi'an Academy of Fine Arts, um, he failed entirely to consider the excellence of Guo's work and question, question, question her legitimacy as an artist when, she, when her artwork was included in major international uh, contemporary art exhibitions in the West. He argued that Lu Zhe's tactic for introducing Guo to the international contemporary art discourse was to quote, bypass the stylicized and academicized Chinese art world, end of quote, um, and that this curatorial strategy should be read as a wake-up call for contemporary Chinese artists, uh, which he defined as art that either borrows from tradition or from the West. Uh, Peng De concluded by rejecting um, Guo's work altogether because he said that it was opaque to a general public, uh, specific to the artist herself, and the result of a personal quest for healing that wasn't substantiated uh, by traditional Chinese medicine. Um, Guo herself didn't fit the criteria, criteria for contemporary uh, Chinese art in as much as she was a middle-aged woman without any arts education in a field dominated by men. This issue, and more specifically Peng De's criticism, can be considered in light of arguments brought forth by the Chinese artist, uh, curator, and critic uh, Xu Hong in her 1994 article, uh, Walking the Abyss, uh, My Feminist Critique. Uh, and in this article, which is highly um, critical of the state of contemporary Chinese art, Xu describes it um, as a narcissistic abyss of homogenous magnetism, where female artists have been continually underrepresented. So I think that this essay 
uh, to me, I read it um, as a kind of equi equivalent to the seminal essay by um, American art historian Linda Knuckling, um, Why Have There Been No Great Women in Arts? Um, but going back to Shu, um, she argues that because all institutional criteria uh, were in accordance, were set up in accordance with rules set by gender, uh, and, and, and this is a quote, uh, women's own language and patterns of thought have involuntarily conformed to the standards of men, end of quote. But as Shu proclaims, if they hope to emerge from this abyss, they have created from themselves, China's male artists and critics must strive along women because, uh, quote, modern art without sober and self-knowledgeable feminist art can only be uh, half-baked modern art, end of quote. So it is clear that those Chinese critics who attempted to read and to interpret uh, Guo's work were likely and equipped to understand her personal um, language and patterns of thought. But rather than admitting um, their difficulties or their struggles with doing so, um, or understanding that this very condition of her work attests uh, to its singularity and its like contemporaneity, uh, they use those very same arguments uh, to to set it up against her. Um, and this is uh, my last um, paragraph. Um, the fact that she was a living artist um, at the time should suffice uh, suffice to grant Guo a place within contemporary Chinese art and international contemporary art. Uh, beyond that, um, her visual language, which is mysterious, opaque, uh, and obscure, fits well within the prerogative of uh, ontologic indetermination that is inherent uh, to global contemporary art. Uh, the dramatic shift that contemporary Chinese art underwent um, in the late... Uh, it, from the late 1970s uh, through the present is not just signaled by a post-1989 uh, awakening of educated artists who swiftly but surely integrated with Western culture, but by the creation of a discursive apparatus, which is by no means limited to China, that seems to have, um, and here um, I, I wanted to just make a note um, or maybe I'll say it later, where I've supported of uh, this research, but I want to credit the thinking. But uh, this discursive apparatus um, that seems to have reduced the definition of contemporary art to a useful, communicable, and self-regulating entity. In other words, an art system that correlates the concept of work, uh, of art to the concept of work. Um, if Google's drawings uh, don't necessarily read as contemporary art. It is not because she isn't a contemporary. Uh, it is not because she's not a contemporary artist, but because of the professionalization of the Chinese art field and its impact on contemporary Chinese art, a global uh, condition that reduces artistic production uh, to protocols mediated by research and communicability uh, methodologies. Uh, Guo's artwork, on the contrary, is of a completely different order. Uh, Guo's images are unique because of their autonomy, uh, their low degree of communicability, and their, and their manifestation of the concept of biopolitics. But it's a biopolitics um, realizing the personal act of self-healing, endurance, and resilience. Uh, Guo's drawings express the mysteriousness and elusiveness of meaning or purpose that might as well be one of uh, the characteristics inherent in art in its truest sense. Um, the bright, elusive, persistent, and governable images of Guo Fengi remind me of what uh, Argentine artist, critic, and curator uh, Jorge Gumier Mayer said, um, that art often happens where it isn't called upon. Um, and that's, yeah, that's so I, from, from, the, from this, which is the end of my talk, I just wanted to add that, that, that under, that, that uh, an essay, um, that, that Argentine art critic, uh, Claudio Iglesias wrote, um, about, um, Argentina, which is where I'm from in the nineties and, and the professionalization of, of the field, uh, through this text written by this, uh, Argentine artist. Uh, who really captured um, how um, how the concept of art was undergoing um, a, an ontological um, transformation um, when the field um, was being professionalized, 
um, it really helped me to think about um, a similar process um, in China. Uh, thank you all um, for watching. I will now try to uh, read some questions.